Welcome back to our XR Engineer training series. This is part eight, sub playbooks. In this video, we're gonna be optimizing the playbook that we built in the last video and build in a reusable sub playbook. Along the way, we'll talk about sub playbooks and specifically playbook inputs and outputs. And with that, let's get to it. All right, we're back in our playbook. And in this video, we're gonna fine tune and extend our use case by implementing the password reset and expire functionality within a sub playbook. Now, sub playbooks can be used as building blocks for other playbooks. This allows us to reuse the functionality that is part of that playbook and the logic that it provides. This means that if you ever change that logic, you simply need to update the sub playbook and it will then apply across other playbooks that use it. So let's get started. We'll add a new playbook. We'll click the plus sign up here. Select new playbook. Call this XOR engineer ED password reset. And we'll click save. This adds that playbook as a second tab in our playbook editor. And we can begin building it. Now in our previous video, we'd already built out the logic to generate a new password for the user, set that password on their account, and then expire their account to force password on next change. And we don't need to rebuild that within this playbook. Within the playbook editor, we can actually copy those tasks from our previous playbook and then modify them to suit their use within a sub playbook. So let's do that. Let's pivot over to the old playbook, scroll down to our remediation phase, and we'll basically do a command shift to allow us, command shift to allow us to drag and drop. This would be control shift within Windows. And you can basically do copy paste. So Command C, Command V in Mac, or Control C, Control V on Windows. We'll do Command C, pivot over to our other playbook, and Command V, which then pastes those three tasks into this playbook. Give this a quick auto align to bring everything up to the top. There we go. And let's link our playbook triggered section to our generate password, line it up. And give it a save. Now at this point we need to modify these tasks to accommodate them running within a sub playbook and this is where we're going to be talking about playbook inputs and outputs which are available to us from this playbook triggered section header. To start let's define a few inputs. You can think of inputs as the arguments for the playbook. They'll be used by the sub playbook to perform the actions that it was designed for. Now we can pass these inputs in as data points that can be accessed by the tasks within the sub playbook, or we can use inputs to direct the sub playbook to take different actions depending on how we want to use it. For example, we know that in order to reset the user's password, we require the user's SAM account name. If we look at the reset password task, you can see that we were grabbing that from context from the outputs of our uh, Active Directory get user command. Now in context of the sub playbook, we're gonna to want to provide an input to allow the users to pass the SAM account name into this sub playbook so that we can reset the password. To do that, we'll click that playbook triggered again, and let's add our first input. We'll give it a name, we'll call this SAM account name, and a description. We can say the SAM account name of, account name of the user to reset the password for. Now, in order for this playbook to function, we do need to make this mandatory. It won't work without it. However, we can specify a default value that the sub playbook will use unless the user chooses to override it, which we'll see when we add this in. For this, we may say that we expect the default, uh, the SAM account name to be in the source or the SAM account name field in the incident details. However, as you'll see, the user will have the option to override this value if they choose to use our sub playbook. Next, we may want to give users of our sub playbook the option to not expire a user's password, giving them control of how the playbook runs. And for that, we can use a playbook input to control the how the playbook runs and even provide a description on how to use it. We'll click add input, give this a name, we'll call it expire password and we'll hard code the value or default the value to yes. In the description, we'll add set to no to not, ex 
expire the user's password. This way, if they so choose, they can choose not to expire the password just by setting the input when they add it into their playbooks. Next, we need to define the outputs. These are the same as our automation and integration command outputs. These are the things that our subplaybook will return to the parent. If you think about it in a programming sense, our inputs for a function that may do math, we may pass it A and B, and our function will add A plus B and return C. In this case, the outputs are the return. For this, we're gonna need that the password that is generated to be returned to our parent playbook so we can then provide it to our analysts in order for them to call the user and give them that password. For this, we can go to the output section, add an output, and you can see that the only task within our playbook that actually produces outputs is the generate password. We're gonna tell our sub playbook to return this to the parent, and you'll see how this works when we give it a run. For now, we can hit save now that we've defined our inputs and outputs, and we can start modifying the tasks to use them. Now to modify our playbook to use our playbook inputs, first we're gonna modify the reset user password task to use the input for SAM account name that our users are gonna be passing into this playbook. For that, we can select reset user password. You can see it's still coded to the output of our ad get user command from the previous video, but we can simply get rid of this, click the blue curly braces, and get access to the playbook inputs that we defined. In this case, we want this command, the ad set new password, to use the SAM account name input that our, our parent playbook will be passing into it. So we can simply click it and hit OK. Next, let's modify our playbook to respect the expire password input and control whether or not it executes this task. We'll remove this and we'll use a conditional that will check the input that the user provides and see whether it's equal to yes. We'll expire password. And we only need one condition, which is yes. And we have access to that playbook input as well. So we'll check expire password and we set the default to be yes. So as long as it equals yes, that'll match our condition. We can hit okay. And we can join the yes path up to the expired password. Give this a save. And then the last thing we need to do is we can just add a done section header. So we'll call this done. This is just a good best practice for the sub playbook indicating that the playbook is indeed done. And we can set the else path for the expired password. So if they provide anything other than yes, it will go down this path. Give the save. We'll make it look pretty using auto align and save the playbook. Check our work. Check under playbook triggered. We now have two inputs, one for the SAM account name that we'll use to reset the password, one for expire password, which we'll use to control how our playbook functions. There's only one output that this playbook will return, which is the new password that was set for the user. So we can hit save, save our playbook, and we can pivot over to our parent and add this into that playbook instead of our hard-coded tasks to reset the password. Go down here, we'll just delete all of these, and we can add our sub playbook via the task library. Let's open up the task library, and we can add our new sub playbook into our parent by going to the playbook section, search for XOR engineer, we'll click add, our playbook comes in down here. Close the task library. We'll link our playbook up to that remediation section header and to the inform user. And we can take a look at its inputs. So if we click here, you can see that the inputs that we defined are available to us. It will default to the ones we set, but we have the opportunity to override them. For example, if we want to pass in the SAM account name from the outputs of our AD get user, we can remove that and pass in the SAM account name. This allows users of our sub playbook to pass in the data based on their use case, depending on where they're getting it from, uh, but still reset that password. You can see that the description for these inputs is, is defined, which is why we put it in there. It helps inform users of your sub playbook how to use it. We can also check the outputs. We can see that the new password output is expected to be returned from our sub playbook, which means it should be in the incident context 
to be used by the following task. So let's hit OK and save this, and let's give our playbook a quick test. Now when testing the sub playbooks, we can still do the skip tasks if we don't want to perform certain actions. We pivot over to our sub playbook here, tell it to skip the task to reset the user's password and expire it. Going back, we can use our playbook, playbook debugger to run this playbook and test the, the new playbook with the sub playbook in place. We'll give this a run. We're going to select the remediate path like we did last time and see if our sub playbook works. We take a look at the sub playbook and see that the new password was generated. We can even see that new password within context. So it was returned by our sub playbook. Now a thing to call out here is that sub playbooks have context of their own. The, the tasks that run under the sub playbook we'll have the context nested here under that sub playbook with the number of the playbook from the playbook uh, editor. If we wanna change this behavior, and in this case we don't, we can hit stop and take a look at our playbook and we can tell it to share the context either globally or the default, which is private to the sub playbook. Now sharing, having the context private is the recommended way. This means that everything that happens within the sub playbook will be under its own context, and only the outputs that we defined will be returned to the parent. That is the best practice. Now, we've basically built a reusable playbook that anyone that wants to perform a password reset in our, our organization can embed in other playbooks. This way, if we ever need to change the functionality, introduce a new component to reset passwords, we can simply modify our sub playbook, and it will be cascaded across the different playbooks that use it. And hit OK. And let's add one more sub playbook using an out of the box playbook. In this case, we'll go back to our task library, go back to playbooks, and let's use a sub playbook to look up the user's manager and retrieve both the manager's display name and email address for our, for our SOC analysts. We can go search for it, we'll search for manager. We have a playbook that gets the user's manager details from Active Directory add this in we can hook it up to our our playbook we'll do this after this one you can see how our concepts of inputs and outputs apply to a pre-built playbook if we take a look we have a username that they're requiring to be passed in so this is that sam account name which we can pass in from our adk user command and we also see that it defaults to looking up the username by the account.email key within context Again, we don't need this, so we can delete it, which means that our playbook will use what we're passing into it. You can see that this playbook will return the user manager email and the user manager display name to the context of the parent for use within the parent. Give this a quick save, auto align it to make it look pretty. And let's modify our inform user a password reset command. You can say this inform user or manager of the password reset. We go to the details, we can actually add the manager information as well. From our available outputs, you can see that the get user manager details gives us the user manager display name and also gives us the manager email. So we can say manager and manager email. This way, if our SOC can't get, can't get a hold of the user, maybe they can get a hold of the user's manager. Hit OK. We can hit Save. And we can review what we did in this video. To review, sub playbooks can be used as building blocks for other playbooks. This allows you to reuse them and the logic they provide in your other playbooks. That means if the logic needs to change, you can simply update the sub playbook. Now, with sub playbooks, sub playbooks receive inputs, and these act just like our automations and integration commands. These inputs are used within the sub playbook and its tasks to perform specific functions in the playbook. You can use those inputs to have the sub playbook take different paths depending on the use case. In addition, our sub playbooks can return outputs. These are then stored in the parent context and can be used in following tasks of the, the parent playbook. And with that, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next.